Hello, boys and girls. Hello, hello. Need to move this over here. It's going up here. Boom. Here is this. Okay, boys and girls, in this little livey. Hey, Van, how are you doing, mate? You all right? Gonna be answering some bass questions. I've already got a list of uh, some from the Discord group, etc., etc. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna get down to that in a second. But first, slurp of coffee, of course. Seven o'clock in the morning here in the beautiful Philippines. Get some coffee down my neck. Doing good. I like that van. Where are you from, mate? I'm always good, especially uh, with a coffee down me. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at some of these questions while I have a coffee. So we've got... Um, can I use more than one tab of working with Bass? Yes. Okay, Bass takes up a lot of RAM. Can I make it easy? I'm guessing that means takes up less RAM. How can I make a bot? How can I make my bots human? Okay, what is a regular expression? Uh, Van, I'm probably from my accent. You can tell I'm from the UK, but um, yeah, I'm living in Asia in the Philippines. It's a bit warmer here, <laughs> a lot warmer here. Less rain, less fog. Uh, can you send out emails with Bass? Yes, you can. Right, take care of that. How can I download images? I keep downloading. Yeah, I get this all the time. That's no problem. Okay, a bit more coffee and we'll, I'll crack on and answer these questions. Yeah, I like it here, mate. It's um, like I said, it's warmer here. I like all the, they've got a lot of beaches. Obviously, it's a bit different at the moment with the older virus going about. Um, yeah, you have to wear a face mask and face shield, so the girls don't look so beautiful with that one, but, you know, it is what it is. But, yeah, the weather's, the weather's good here. There's less red tape when, for business. It's very easy to uh, set stuff up. No questions. So, yeah, it's, it's quite good. It suits me. It's not for everyone at all there is the downsides of course but overall um for me at least um yeah it suits me the weather definitely suits me so uh, what is it seven o'clock now i don't know it's probably about 26 27 yeah so it's not bad not bad righty ho then i think one more slurp of coffee i'm down for this Well, I'm going to open a new project because I know this one's got a bit of the older TikTok project in. So let me just empire gang project free. It's not found. No, come on. Maybe I, maybe I haven't had enough coffee. Uh, what am I doing? What? Why am I new? Come on. Project free. Wipe that in. Okay, we have a blank project. So, let's hit record. So, get this expanded. For some reason, it won't let me edit it directly how I want the screen. So, I resorted to just making it full screen. Right, let's have a look. Can I use more than one tab with working with bats? Yes, you can. Who was that from? Did I get a name for that one? Morocco, Morocco. I think that's from the Discord, that one. Okay, so tabs. You can indeed work with other tabs. So I'm not sure what some people didn't realize. Up here, you can search for options here, like you can put in tab if you've got an inquiry. So we can select tabs. 
Now tabs have um, a index number. So the main, if you work with more than one tab, then that will be tab zero. If you open another tab, that would be um, indexed as tab one. So when you select tabs and it asks you which one you want to work with, just bear that in mind. And like um, programming, uh, it starts at zero. So let's let's go to um, let's get out of here. Um, let's go load and let's go bing.com. Okay. And then what we could do is, if I remember correctly, is if we go to tabs, we can add a tab. Okay. And then you can decide which URL that's going to. And then you can decide if it's um, loads silently. If it's silent, if you put this to true, that means that you can't see the browser. So this could be good, especially if your bot is for sale and you have clients and in the background you want it to say, let's just say that you're getting a disposable email or something like that. Okay, maybe you don't want the uh, window to open. Okay, so what you could do is set this to true and this will do all the instructions that you give it, but it will do it without you or the client or whoever uh, seeing the browser. Okay. Instabot, hello. Can you explain more about custom GUI for scripts? I want to make something that's easy to use with a hundred threads or browsers at the same time and controlling the resources from inside the GUI. So you're talking about custom uh, GUIs with Bass. Um, may I ask if you have the paid version of Bass because um, you will need that to be able to make your own GUIs. Just so you know, it's one of the few things that um, uh, Bass hide, not hides, but doesn't give you access to in the free version. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Uh, just let me know on that. I'll just carry on while you uh, let me know. Um, so we could, for this tab, we could go to um, reddit.com. Always going to Reddit. Um, um, no, I don't want it to be. So then this is going to open another tab, okay? So this is this is now uh, tab uh, one. Uh, okay, it's the bot. Yep, definitely. I'm just going to plow through these questions quickly. I've just got, um, these are, oops. I've got about four or five questions from the Discord and from emails. So I'm just going to answer them and then um, I'll definitely get on to your questions. So if you want to hang around for the next like 20 minutes or so, or um, if not, come back in about 20 minutes and I'll definitely crack on and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into GUIs a little bit. Okay, right. Um, so. So yeah, sorry, this is, so this is now tab one. So then what you can do if you want to go in between tabs is you simply go tab <laughs> and then select tab. And then, so remember what I said, so your main index, which has got bing.com on is now indexed as zero. Okay. And the reddit.com one would be one. So you can switch in between tabs by at any point just going like, oh, okay, I want to go back to zero now. Okay, so then you'd be selecting tab one, then you can carry on and you'd be working with tab one. And then if you selected tab, um, sorry, select one, then you'd be working with the reddit.com tab. So this is, you can do as many tabs as you want. Okay, yeah, so that's the basics of tabs. To get all the options for tabs, just click uh, type tab in here. So you can close tabs that you're not using. You can select the tab, add a tab. You can get information about the tab, like uh, which uh, site it's on, et cetera, et cetera. So to answer, yes, you can use tabs, and that's how you do it. Okay, let's get rid of this. Next, let's have a look. Close this out a sec by look. Okay, Bass takes up a lot of RAM. Can I make it easy? I guess you mean can it use a less RAM? Well, uh, here's the tingling. Yes, you can do things to make the uh, less impact on RAM and CPU, which I'll show in a second. But you, we have to remember that Browser Automation Studio is a framework. Okay, 
all frameworks are he heavy, okay, heavy meaning that they're going to be slower than using the scripting language. They've got a lot of weight on them. It's like having stabilizers on a bike. It's kind of like you have to have a happy medium. Bass has is rich in features and gives you a lot of options and makes you uh, you're able to create projects really quickly. Okay. On the downside of that, obviously it's a framework and has a lot a lot of um, dependencies. Okay. So it's never going to be. It's always going to be a bit more intensive. On well, when I say a bit, quite a lot more intensive on RAM and CPU because of all the overheads. Coupled with the fact at the moment Chrome has an issue, um, a known issue, I don't think they've fixed it yet, with using a lot of RAM. It's a RAM hog. Okay. So couple them two things together, okay, it makes life a little bit difficult. So I do understand what you're saying um, about the RAM CPU issue. You're just going to have to get a better computer. No, not really. Um, well, it depends on your project. If you're if you're running a hundred threads, fifty threads, whatever, then you're best to use your project on a server anyway. And then you're just going to have to make allowances for RAM and CPU. It's just the way it is. Them two things combined. The fact that Chrome right now is heavy on RAM guzzles it, and then any framework. Not just I'm not picking on Browser Automation Studio. Any frame, any of these frameworks are going to be intensive on RAM and CPU, um, and that's just the nature of the game. Uh, you know, when you're using scripting languages or coding, uh, it, obviously they're going to be a lot faster. But you don't get that dependency, you don't get that support and kind of ease of use that you get with frameworks. Now, with that being said, let us get over to here. And let's just say I'm going to use it again. I'm going to use Reddit as an example. Where am I? I want something that's quite picture intensive. Um, I don't know. Let me just see. <laughs> Let me just go to yahoo.com. Okay. So, as you can see, we've loaded uh, yahoo.com. Now, what we could do before this, okay, if you go to network, so the network tab, and you go to um, uh, request mask, request mask deny, okay, now you can deny loading anything that you want, and you can use a match all. So, what I mean by that, we could go star dot png. And what will happen now when the page goes to load, it will deny loading any PNG images, okay? And then uh, request mask deny again, we could go on, we could say JPEG, okay? So when we run it now, if there is any JPEGs and PNG pictures, then they won't load, okay? I don't think, and this, this is a really bad example using yahoo.com i think it <laughs> doesn't use anything but you can but you can do this with anything with ads you can do this with anything that you see on the screen if you get the name of it then you can deny it which uh for example if you still need a browser an official browser but you don't need all like images and stuff like that if you're doing scraping uh, then see what you can get away with delete images um Yep, great. Hey, hello, mate. Thanks for joining us. Just uh, getting into some um, browser automation studio questions, getting some answers out there, uh, and drinking some coffee. Uh, yeah, so you can uh, master night anything. You can even go like CSS and delete the whole CSS. I'm not sure how this is going to work with, I don't, it's not a standard HTML. Yeah, there you go. Look, now look at it. So now we've got rid of all the CSS. Okay. So it just depends on what you're doing. Like I say, if you're just scraping and you can still see the stuff on the page or you just need the HTML, then this will work fine. Okay. Um, yes, it's uh, it's 7.16 in the morning yet, Craig. So yeah, a couple of coffees, start off. I was up quite late. So, you know, inject the coffee into the eyeball, get it to the brain quicker. 
you know how it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I say, it, de it depends on what you're trying to do, but try and cut out, you know, try and like uh, cut out as much as what you don't need, and that will help speed things up. Okay, so that's network, request, mask, deny, bada boom, bada bing. So that's that. So let's get rid of all this. Okay, and actually, okay. Speaking of which, it's time for a little slurp of coffee before we get on to the next question, which is how can I make how can I make my bots look human? Right, ho, let's have a bit of coffee, get the brain working. Oh, lip crate, don't get me on capsules as well. I'm drinking enough coffee as it is. I'll be running down the street in my underwear. <laughs> How can I make my bots look human? Right. Okay, so. By looking human, I, I think you're, I, I don't know if I've got a name of someone who, uh, I think I got that via email. I think that's why I haven't got a name for whoever sent that in. Um, is it possible to open Bass in Mac? Okay, so it, Bass is a Windows uh, software. Okay, now with that being said, I haven't tested this out, but there is programs that can run Windows software with Mac. I think one's called Wine. Is it wine or something like that? It's a uh, wine. wine glass, yeah. Um, Windows to Mac wine. Yeah, 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 I saw it. How to install Windows wine, okay. Yeah, so there's a program called Wine, so check that out. Um, you're, I'm not sure if it works with Bass. I've never, I've never tried it. I've only, I've never tried to run Bass under anything but Windows. But just to sum up, it is an actual Windows software to make Windows uh, programs, okay? Um, but with that being said, give it a go. I mean, you know, uh, report back, let us know. If there is a way to run it on Mac, that would be really good for people to know because, yeah, a lot of people have Macs. You can use VMware. Yeah, that's a lip code. That's another good idea. Maybe... Give it a go. I mean, that's that's the best way. I have never tried, so I can't really give advice on it. I know there is programs to run Windows software with Mac. Will it work with Bass? Who knows? Or it, even if you can't run uh, Bass as in the design software, can you run a compiled a compiled bot and use Wine? This is this is what we need to find out. This is some stuff that. We should look into for sure because so many people obviously use Mac. So, is there a way to set a thread to like? That's a great question. That is a really good question. Uh, so GUI and then uh, thread delay. Thread delay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically there, there is a way that you can delay threads or there's a couple ways that you can de uh, delay threads. So um, yeah, I'll show you that after I'll get, I'll do things in order. That way everyone gets their questions answered. Yeah, okay. So, 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 what, oh yeah, human emulation. Now the person who sent this question, I, I presume what you're trying to ask or say is, how do you avoid sites uh, detecting you as a bot? Now, the, the first thing that you can use is use the fingerprint switcher. Uh, so, so let's start again. So Bass uses an embedded version of uh, Chrome, um, Chrome, Chrome Aluminium. Um, if you leave it without a fingerprint, then it is what it is. Sites can see what you're doing. Now, does that matter? Depends on what you're doing. It depends on if you're using it with, say, Reddit or uh, Instagram and this kind of thing. 
you're going to have to use some kind of disguise. Now, the fingerprint switch with Bass uh, changes things at a JavaScript level. So it doesn't change it at the code base level. This is the big thing that people don't understand. So does the fingerprint switcher work? Yes, 90% 90, 90 of the time. Can sites still detect it and detect it using Bass? Uh, some of the bigger sites are. Okay, so again, it depends what you're doing, but it doesn't hurt to use the fingerprint switcher. And like I said, it works in most cases. So what you, um, it's a paid service unless, let me get into it. So you can use the fingerprint switcher for free, but you can only get one fingerprint per three minutes. And you can only use um, a fingerprint that's for Microsoft Windows and for the Chrome browser. Okay, now you can, and I don't own Browser Automation Studio and I'm not getting anything out of this, so this ain't a, but they have a, the fingerprint switcher. You can get a key from them, which enables you to, um, which enables you to, you can read it on there anyway. Um, it's let me just whack that into the chat as well i'm sure i think everyone that's on the chat knows about this but put it in there anyway and for the people not on the chat that's watching the replay i'll put it in the description okay and what i think they've got like fifty thousand different uh different fingerprints and they're adding new ones all the time and it changes basically you can see what it changes on here it basically changes your browser so you, uh, yeah, so you can get away with murder. No, so that um, if you're running multiple accounts, then each account looks different. Okay, so approximately this is how many accounts they've got. And when you get a key from them, you can change your fingerprint to match Apple, Mac, Android, IE, etc., etc. Um, so does it work with every site? Like I said, it changes things at the JavaScript level, not at the code level. So most of the time it's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so that's the first thing to do. So get yourself a key if you're getting serious with this. If you just want to test it out, then you can change it every three minutes and you don't need a key, but you, you only get Microsoft Windows and Chrome uh, fingerprints back. So that's the first thing to do. So how do you use the fingerprint switcher? Well, first you get a fingerprint but get fingerprint and if you're not using the if you don't have an account for the fingerprint switcher just hit okay it's going to go and get you a fingerprint then simply uh, it puts the fingerprint into a variable called fingerprint unless you change it and then you simply press apply fingerprint you can change these options if you want but if you're just getting started it's fine and then which fingerprint well it's the one that's in the variable fingerprint hit okay and Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. Then if you go to any website, uh, bing.com. Why are you picking on Bing or Reddit? Okay, so then you have that fingerprint. So, uh, that's the first way. The second way that we, uh, what we do is obviously, and every, I know everyone knows this, but you can do waiters. Every, you know, most people know this. Uh, you can. You can sleep around. <laughs> you can sleep around. You can sleep, but what you can do is you can use random sleep time. So instead of put, having two seconds every time, just randomize it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. That's quite, I think most people know that. But if not, go to waiters and then go to sleep. Go to sleep, everyone. Go to sleep. And then click random time and put the minimum amount of wait time. And maximum this is in milliseconds so 1000 equals one second let me just catch up here have you a solution to automate snapchat i think it's impossible um okay let me just look does snapchat have uh, yeah snapchat um i yeah so it's uh it's uh what do you call it it's an application only it's not online so um um with with browser automation studio i'm gonna say no the reason being uh it's an app 
it's an app only they don't have an online version as far as I know okay uh, yeah I, I don't think so I mean uh, is there anything here I don't know much about snapchat to be fair but as far as I'm aware it's an app only so I don't think um, bass is going to be too much good with it I don't know if they have an API oh, I could just find out no. I, do I have anything? I don't think they've even got here. Yeah, I'll just see. Snapchat so is launching four new APIs, including the Snap Login API, create accounts on the app. For now, I'm going to say no, leave it alone with Browser Automation Studio just because I don't think that's the best option, to be honest, to use Browser Automation Studio for that. And I think. I don't think it's very possible at the moment, and even if it is, I I don't think it's going to be much fun. I don't think you're going to be able to do a lot with it. Razorback, hi. Who the fuck is this guy? You do fucking nothing. Sweet, thanks for joining us. Okay, a sip of coffee. So it would be easier if you just inject it into your eyeball. Yeah, they're quicker. Right. So where was I? Yeah, so that's quite an obvious one. Random time. I think most people uh, know about that. Um, so yeah. Um, one that most people know, but maybe don't use to the best of their ability, is idle emulation. So in the toolbox, go to idle emulation and then Click idle emulation and then time spent on page in seconds. So this will spend 10 seconds on the page and it's going to do a one, one, two, three, 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 four, four. So that means if you click down here, you'll see what one does. Okay. Two, three, and four. And like sleep, see this is going to do 10 seconds every time. So what you could do is make this random. Um, and we could just go, or you could give the user the option to do this. And what I mean by that is, so let's let's cancel this. Let's cancel. Let's get rid of some of this. Right. Let's get rid of this. So you could put how long to look human. So I'm making a resource here, and then we could have a random integer. Integer. Okay, so the um, it's in seconds this time, so you could have uh, I don't know between two and twenty. Okay, and there you go. So then you're giving the user the option or yourself, depending on if you're giving it to someone else, the script. Okay, so I'm going to put between two and ten and then uh, what we could do for idle emulation is just come in here instead of having ten we could have what am I doing why did I do that um, here how long to look human okay Hit OK, and there you go. So it's going to act. It's going to do. Let me just stop this. It's going to. It's going to. It's going to. It's going to do these steps, but instead of taking ten seconds every time, it's going to do it between. It's going to take between two and ten seconds, a random amount each time. So it's another way to mix things up a little bit. Okay. Next thing. When, um, and I'm not saying you need all these every time. It just depends on the project you're doing and how deep you need to go. Another thing is what people do is if we are oh, a good good thing going to be and get rid of this. Um, okay. So let's get over to Bing.com. Go here. 
Now, 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 now. Uh, for for typing, okay, you can mix things up with this as well with the same kind of um, idea. So what we could do is say we're going to type. We're going to type how to grow hair, which I would love to know the answer to. Now here you can decide how quickly it types in milliseconds. Okay, so as standard, it's a hundred, and everyone normally sticks to that. But what you could do is randomize this as well. Uh, so you could give you could give the user the option to decide what this is, or via a resource like we've done. Or what you could do is um, what you can do. Okay, let's interrupt. Is come here and then under tools, you can random number and then between say five and a hundred and call it random random type speed okay and then all you do is come back here and where it says how quickly oh no it's in milliseconds no interval in milliseconds yeah so here you could change this to your random type speed so then every time it types into this box it's going to be at a random speed and not everyone's going to be typing at the same speed on every every thread on every fill out of the uh, search bar will be at a different speed instead of all being at the exact same speed with every single thread you know so that's another way to mix things up how make for download pictures from file ah oh, nice one uh, it's uh, that question's actually in the list already, so um, I'm going to be answering that short shortly. It, everyone asks that because it is a bit of a pain to do with um, Browser Automation Studio, but I am going to get to that and show you uh, what there's quite there's quite a few ways. Um, some of them are quite long winded, and some are a bit more easy. So we'll get to that shortly. Uh, so yeah, that's tight speed, and just one more thing. I can't remember how to show you it. Um, let's have a look. This is one that people don't use really. I think it's under mouse. Move on element. Okay, let me try and find it. Um, 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 um. Okay, this calls for a little bit more coffee. Hey, hey, Villa Dalek. Have you a solution to scrape data from YouTube subscriber? Hello from France. Um, when you say scrape data from um, a YouTube subscriber, do you mean, uh, say, go onto their profile? Um, like, I'm actually running on YouTube. So, do you mean go onto their profile and scrape? What is it you're trying to get? Tell me a bit more. Tell me more. Um, okay, so let me try and find this in the meantime. Oh, okay, where where is it? It's under. It's under, under, under. Who knows? <laughs> Who actually knows? Um, I can't actually remember. It's been such a while. Is it? Oh yeah, under browser and then mouse settings. Now this seems really trivial and you probably don't need to do this, but this, like I said, I want to show you how to go really in depth. Some sites do pick up on this kind of thing. Um, Instagram is one for sure. Now these are the settings that every single one of us that is using Browser Automation Studio is using and we're using it all on the same threads, okay, all our bots. So would that look suspicious to you? If you've, if you've got a website, like one of the big boys like Instagram, Reddit, all this kind of thing, and you've got stuff in place to detect bot. Um, if the mouse, if you can detect the mouse movements, like you have heat maps and stuff, so lots of the sites can. I'm talking about the big sites now. I'm talking about, you know, big players. I'm not, if you're just scraping data or you're just trying to uh, kind of um, 
mimic on less known sites, then this this kind of thing, you know, you don't have to go so so deep. But if you're messing around with the big boys who have bot detection and stuff, then you need to start thinking about this. So with most people didn't even know these options here. But anyway, so you can you can actually change the the how uh, the speed of the mouse, okay, how quickly it moves across the screen, the gravity, so how quickly like and then it's deviation. Okay, so you can click on you can move your mouse on Discord link. Discord link. One second, I'll get that for you, mate. Um, so you can find out what these mean here. Okay, but basically it's the speed, how um the direction of the mouse and how it gets from A to B. Okay, so you can change these, or what you could do is randomize them with the exact same method that we used before. So mouse speed, we could go, let's just put this in here first. What we could do is tools, random number between five and a hundred. We could call this mouse speed. Yeah, boom. And then we replace the mount this, the hundred, with mouse speed. Now, every time this runs, you're going to have a different mouse speed. Okay. And you could do that with all of the settings that are on there. So now we've got random uh, type speeds, we've got random mouse movement, we've got um, fingerprint switching, with uh, randomly scrolling up and down the page. So all these things together is going to make you look more like a human user. Do you need all these all the time? Probably not. Do all sites know what the mouse movements are and using heat maps and seeing like uh, different movements? Probably not. But I'll tell you something for certain. Everyone that's using Bass out of the box is using a the same speed, the same uh, gravity, the same type and speed, the same movement across the site and everything. Okay, so changing these up are going to make you look different to the big players in uh, online, like Instagram, Reddit, all these kind of sites. Okay, good stuff. Now, uh, 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 let's go to this. Oh. Boom. Quick commercial break. No, not, not commercial break. Uh, let's go here. Hmm. What's your name on here? Sure, you spoke to me in the last minute. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I've sent you an invite on the old Discord. You'll be in the waiting room after this uh, after this live feed. I'll upgrade you so you're on all the channels. Okay, so next question: What are regular expressions? Oh, that's a big subject. Who sent that in? Who am I going to have to go and get the baseball bat for? Team Cash Taker. Oh, I think he's on Discord. Right. So let's get to it. Try and get a good example. Let me think of a. Okay, we can. I'm going to go to Reddit for this, <laughs> as always. A red a regex is a way to. Um, extract information from a page. Regex is a huge subject. You basically build a regex to be able to um, to be able to scrape information. It's one way to scrape information. Let me think of a good um, good way to show you this. A, a good example. I'm just coming off the bat a minute to look. Something that's got, uh, I know. Just crack on with this. Oh, so hot in here. 
Guys, I'm going to go and turn on the aircon, yeah? And I need you to do me a favour. I always wondered this. Let me know if it's really loud, if it's really interfering. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay, I'm back. Is it anyone on anyone uh anyone listening to me? Anyone in the chat? Can you tell me if that's loud? Can you hear that in the background? Is it overgoing on my voice? Band. Uh I'll check I'll check out after the feed. Send me send me a, a message on, on Discord now so that when I finish the uh, live chat that I can uh I'll be reminded and I'll check that out. And also, while you're here, can you tell? Can you hear me? Okay. Is the I've I've turned on the aircon in here. Like I turn it off for the feeds, and it's kind of like a. I was wondering if anyone can tell me if you can hear the aircon. Is it too loud? Let me know, guys. Right. So let's just sort this out. Okay, so this could be a good one. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you with Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, everyone No difference nice one mate. I just wanted to know because I, I was gasping for air I turned the aircon off thinking oh, it's got it's got to be quiet. They're gonna hear They're gonna hear everything but Yep, yeah, nice one. Thanks for that. So let's so a regex is a way to extract information from um, a web page. It's basically a way to scrape, okay? Scrape data. Is it the best way? Uh, you can use XPaths and you can use loops and stuff. Um, yep, great. Ah, oh, nice one. Thanks a lot. That's, that's cool. Let's put my mind at rest. So let's view the source code for here. Uh, so, for instance, if we wanted all links on this page, okay, we could build build a regex using that. We can use XPath, but um, I just want to show you a really, uh, really easy or quicker example. But this could be used to extract anything from the page. So, luckily for us. Uh, Bass has an inbuilt uh, regex um, builder, so I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, but first, I'm going to grab the site and show you how we even go about this. So let's get rid of all this, okay? And then I'm going to load Craigslist in Manila. It's more fun in the Philippines. Right. Now, what we want to do is get the page HTML. So that's in browser, get the page HTML. So we can work with that and build our regex. Now, I'm going to come over to Bass. And if you go to tools, regular expression constructor, I want to build a regular expression. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's go to the source code and let me just uh, let's have a look through this quickly. Yeah, so I'm just going to show a really an easy example because it'll make learning easy. So when you're building a regex, what you need is something before the data. That you're trying to scrape okay and something after okay so this one wasn't a good example actually hold on <laughs> one second that's better so that's going to be easy to follow just trying to see one that's going to be
yet. So we could do something like that. I'm trying to find the most easiest one to make it uh right. That was it. Yep. Okay. So we can have that before that after. Loving it. So when you're building a regular expression, what you need is something before the actual data that you want to actually scrape. So this would be before and this would be after. So then it would scrape, you can make it scrape anything in between. Now regex is a complicated subject, you can do a lot more with it than that, but this is the basics and how it's used, you know, uh, to scrape. So once you have that information, then you'd click next. Now it's saying, where's the actual data that you want to scrape? So I want, for this example, I just want this to here and click next. Now it's going to ask, what do you want before? So where's the data before? So I know what to scrape. So it's this. Now it's going to ask you, so is it going to be this exact text every time? Is it going to be different? For this example, it's going to always be this and it's always going to be one time. So I'm looking for anything that has this at the start and it's just on there one time. Now what's after? So just this, just the, uh, why have I forgot what it's called? This. And it's always going to be that in one time, okay? Then it's going to say, okay, highlight what you need again. So I'll do that. As I say, so what's going to be in between? So if you're on, there's many options and many ways to do this, but if you put any symbol, that means, well, anything that's in between them two things, anything. How many times, meaning how many characters? Well, we don't know how many characters are going to be in there. So we're going to put one or more time and match as few time, few as possible. Okay, so press next, and that's our regex here. Now we can put a test to make sure it works as we want by doing that. So if I put all that in, what we'd get back is the link here. Okay, it hasn't got the HTTPS, but we could make a uh, fast add that at the start. It's no problem. So what we do is copy the regex. Okay, so we we can come here, and what we can do is we can. It has a whole section for regex. We could just find the first match for a regex or extract all. Um, I haven't got time in this feed to go over it, everything, but in this case, we're going to extract all of them. So where do we want to test or use the regex? Well, we want to use it on the source code. So we've got the source code for the page here, and it's in a variable called saved page HTML. And what regular expression do we want to use? Well, the one that we just built, bam. Okay, and what the results, where do we want to save it? Well, I'm going to save it into a list called scan result list. You can change this to whatever you like. Okay, hit OK. So let's run it from the start and see if we get anything. Extract. Now let's look here. What have we got? There you go. There's all the results that match that. Now that's not put, look, you've got lots of URLs here. You, you want to clean this up and lots like this don't have the HTTP at the front, but it's easy to add that. Okay, so that's the real basics of regex. I haven't got time to do a, a full tutorial on regex in the live feed. Uh, yeah, but that's the basics. Okay, how can you send out emails with Bass? I'm not sure if you're talking about sending mass emails out. Um, I'm not condoning anything illegal here at all. Uh, Bass can send emails out. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how that's done. Really quickly, it's not a subject. Uh, so where are we? It, there's a whole whole toolbox for send emails. First of all, you just use your H, uh, ST, oh, SMTP details. So you put your host. So for instance, for uh, Gmail, HMT, HMTP settings. You can just do a lookup for your settings for your provider. So if you wanted to send out an email with Gmail, 
you would just use this. You can look it up. So that, that one. What port do they use for that particular service? It is port 465. And then you would just put the username and the password of your um, email account. So this is really good uh, for error handling or if something's finished. So just say you got to the end of the, your script, you could use this to uh, send out your message. So let's just, this is just obviously not a thing. Just say that was your username and password. So now you've got, you've set up a connection to the email. The next thing that you want to do after that is send the email. So then you could put the from, so you'd use your, the from would need to be the email address that you've set up your SMTP from, okay? Mail to, well, whoever you're trying to mail out to. Subject, you know, you know, it's, uh, send an email. So that's the subject and that's the content. Now this is really good if you're, uh, if you've got a bot running on a server, okay? and you want it to email you and let you know when it's finished or when an error happens or um, anything. Just say after 100, uh, 100 accounts have been made or you've scraped 100 pages, then send you over an email to let you know. So it's really good to up, update you or for client work as well. Maybe uh, they need to know once something's finished or your team does, then you can uh, make it send you an uh, email. I'm not condoning or... Um, saying it's a good idea to use it to send out mass emails or anything illegal. Use it at your own discretion. It's meant to be used to um, update you, uh, to send yourself an email or a client or something when a uh, thing, something's finished with your bot or an error has happened. Okay. How, ah, uh, this is the big one. This is the one. Oh, I've run out of coffee, but anyway. How can I download images? They keep downloading as a dot file. Now, without bashing Browser Automation Studio, downloading uh, images or files is not the easiest thing to do. There is, and there's about five different options to be able to work, let's just call it a workaround to be able to do it. And I know exactly what you guys are saying. Who actually sent the actual one? Oh, no one, because lots of people have been asking it. Okay, so, so um, yeah, so as you guys know, when you try and download something like an image, normally it downloads the computer as a dot file, okay, and I'm going to do a whole video on this because it gets asked so much, but just one way with images, let's just, let's, let's clean up a little bit, let's just get this down. Right, so uh, unsplash one, an image, an image of <laughs> dogs. Who knows? Right, you'll do. Right, let's grab this. I've got to remember myself the what method that I wanted to show you. So if we go to browser load. And we go to this particular photo. It, it doesn't have to, this could be anything on a site that you wanted to download. Then what you need to do, I've just got to remember myself, is yeah, okay. So go to the thing that you're trying to download and then uh, it's get get element attribute I think let me just actually there's two ways that I want to show you because let me just see um did I save it okay let me play around with the second way I want to show you so just forgive me if I get a little bit sidetracked here. Uh, okay, let's just check that out. And then, 
Oh yeah, there's a down there is a download function. That's it. That's it. It was already built in. Your L. So um, let me just check this first. Save attribute. Yeah, save attribute and save to. So I, I need to. I could, I'm just going to hard code this for now. But you could make this into a resource. I'm just mumbling at the moment, guys. I'm just checking that this, the way I wanted to show you works, which is helpful. Let's make a folder. Uh, yeah, images. Okay. So I'm just going to hard code it in. Okay. Let's see what's going on. Get a folder. So let's just check. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. And then ah, it's a dim low. Right, might need to give it a bloody name. Let me just check this then. I'm I'm just trying to um go through this myself and then I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. So don't worry, ignore me. Cause I want to show you this method, but I don't remember myself. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Work perfect. Okay. So here is a way to do it is use requests. So what I've done. Let me just clean this up. So it's a, there you go. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to, this could be anything. Okay. You could go to any website, anything. So I'm loading this page because it's odd. You can see what's going on. That's why. Okay. There's a picture. So what I've done is gone to uh, get the attribute. Okay. So that is, Right click on the thing that you're trying to get. Okay. Get element attribute. Okay. And what attribute do you want? Well, it's either going to be, and it's probably more than likely going to be SRC, which stands for source. Okay. Or if not, IMG for image. But, you know, uh, SRC normally works. So you get the attribute of it which in this case is going to be the URL of the image, which is here. Do you see that? Okay. So that's the image. So we've got the image URL. Then if you come to search and you go download, there's an actual section for downloads. And then what do you want to download? Well, the saved attribute, because that is the link to the image. And then just simply put in, I've just hard coded in where you want to save, but this could be a resource. Okay, so you could uh, have a folder resource so that it saves to a particular folder. And that's one way that you can download. Uh, this is especially useful for images, but can be used for anything else. I'm going to leave it there. That's just one way to uh, download stuff. It needs a whole video for it. I'm trying to answer some questions. So, yeah, that's one way, especially good for images. Uh, and you can do this for as many images as you wanted. Yeah, so that's that. Um, GUI. Okay. So, uh, the person who asked about the GUIs, I'm of course presuming that you're that you have the paid version of Bass. It's one of the few things that they 
hold back from you, which is fair enough. I mean, they give bass to you for free. So it's one of the things you have to pay for. So when you've completed a project, in fact, let's do this. I know what we're going to do. I know what we're going to do. So uh, what am I doing? Why am I doing that? Deary me, come on. So let's have how to look human uh, site to go to. And this is going to be a quick, again, this requires a whole video as well, but um, go to number of threads. I'm just making this up just so we can make some kind of how many pages to scrape. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, just for time's sake. And again, so I'm going to save as. We're going to save this as <laughs> Empire Showcase. Okay, just so it's unique. Now, so you've got your bot. You've completed your bot. You want to show your mum, your dad, and your girlfriend how great you are at making bots. So then we'll go to Build and Compile. And you're going to have these uh, list of options. You need to call the script here the same as what you've um, as what you've called the script that you were making, okay, for the upload. So show show case. Why is why is this blanked out? Oh, because of there. <laughs> okay. So Empire Showcase. Okay. Then, like I said, I'm presuming that you've actually got the full full version of Bass. You can change the icon here if you so choose to. Uh, then you have your options here. Uh, I'll let you read through them. You can add the scheduler. Uh, you can hide the browser. Only allow a single application per computer. Check that. Whatever the case. Now, then you hit OK, and it's going to say update the local project. You always want to do that. Do you want to create a standalone application? If you do that, it's going to save a copy to your computer that's like a full application that you can then go and send to whoever you want to use the bot. Okay, then. I'll move this over here. So then in that box you just saw, you'd put your um, username and password to upload it to the server, okay? Bring it back. There you go, see, it's uploaded to the server now, okay? So that sounds good, but now what? So you could have built a standalone copy. I didn't build a standalone copy, but you could do, and it will open up the bot to where that standalone copy is. Okay, and then you that's your that's your files to give away to whoever you want. But you, it's still protected, don't worry. And this is a really quick overview, okay? Um so hold on a minute. Hold on. Just give me a second, people. Into this. Okay, so this is your um, access panel. You, uh, you'll know where that is if you have a bass. So you could go to, and this is going off the subject a little bit, but once you've given your, you've got your compiled application and you've given it to someone, what you do is you go create a user and then you give them a username and password. Okay. Right. Create user. And then you could go to give script to user and then what's their username, put in their username. 
and then what script so the one that you just uploaded to the server uh, empire showcase okay and then you can decide when their license expires for a year and how many machines that they can use it on okay i know that wasn't the question but that's how you give away your scripts now now then uh scripts If you go to your script that you just uploaded, see, we uploaded it, remember? Now it's here. You can go to Actions, and you can go to Interface. And then where it says Custom Interface, it's disabled to, as standard, click Enable, and then click Default Version, okay? Otherwise, you're just going to have a blank screen. Now, here's the other thing that you want to change if you want other people other than yourself to see the uh, custom, G, excuse me, uh, GUI. So then you put in able for everyone. And then here, you can change the login screen as well if you want, it, want to, which is when they run the bot for the first time. It, it's going to ask for the username and password. You can change that. But for now, edit user interface. And you'll be brought to the editor. Now, if you know HTML and CSS, that's a huge advantage. And you can make this look however you want if you have them skills. Uh, there's so many courses online for HTML, CSS. Okay, But fear not, if you don't know them things, then it's fine. This is how the GUI is going to look. If you just saved it now, it's going to look like this. Okay, so you can go down here and like any editor, just say you wanted to get rid of this, highlight it, delete, it's gone. Delete, okay, so let's get rid of some of these. Highlight, delete, delete, delete. Okay, you get the idea with the delete. So you just highlight an option, uh, a column, delete, delete, okay. Now, if you highlight something and you go to here, oh no, sorry, it's on the right one here. You can go, for instance, it's a bit like any kind of um, editor that doesn't use code. You can just find the options you want, like typography. I could change this, the font family and the font size. Put it in the middle, okay? We can also, which one is it? Ah, uh, the last column here, the all four boxes. You can do what you could normally do with a visual editor. That you've got all these, add a text box, a button, text link. So I could come over here and drag and drop here and put version 2.1, I don't know, of our full box, okay? Now, I could just simply highlight this like any visual editor, and then come back to the uh, typography, and then I could change this again, font 30, to whack it in the middle, you see? So it's very much like a visual editor. You can get really, really deep with this, okay? if Like I said, if you know HTML or that kind of thing, you can edit everything, okay? You can check, look, change the colors, make it red, Okay, let's just go to these and then um, that, change the size, change the, put everything in the middle, change the size of this. Okay, uh, you can change everything. Let's get the button, let's make the button this big. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you get the idea. So the main things that you want when you come on to the editor is this one here, the end one, where you've got all your things like adding checkboxes, images, tabs, all that kind of thing. And the one that I always use, the first, the paintbrush one, is where you can change dimensions, uh, the margins, padding. Okay, so this is the visual version. Type, uh, typography, I think I'm saying that right. You can align everything look I know this looks amazing this is absolutely amazing I know you're jealous everyone uh, you can start changing colors of everything you know have it how you want now 
If you know HTML and CSS, you can go to the code, okay, and you can change everything to your heart's delight. Okay, now let's just say that 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 I know this looks perfect. This is probably exactly how you want your bot. <laughs> just say you finished. Okay, or if, if just want to save it, you know, to make sure if a, your computer crashed, it's all saved. Then you hit save changes on server. That's all you need to do now. Now, anyone that has your bot, that's the version that they're going to see. Now, let's just say that we change this to that and we hit save. When the person reloads their bot, so they exit the bot and they load back on, they're going to see the changes as well. Okay. And that is how you build your GUI. Now, you can. This is the main thing that they see. If you wanted to add things to the, you know, once you run the bot and then it comes up with all this, like how many threads, failures, and all that kind of thing. Well, that can be changed as well. There's two tabs resources, which is your main screens, and then script progress, where this can be changed. Whack it in the middle again, and so on and so forth. And the same rules apply. Okay. You can change all this. I think you get the idea, save, boom. Okay, and now, now I've saved it, everyone that uses the bot once they reload is gonna, gonna catch that and it's gonna change for them. Can you install Chrome uh, extensions on the Bass browser? I'm gonna have to go in a second, guys. I'm gonna have to wrap it up, but to sum up Van, yes, you can. Let's quickly get out of that, go here. Uh, I haven't got time to show you doing one, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. And I promise in the next video, I'll actually do one with you. So record, default, it doesn't really matter. There is an actual, an actual option to add stuff to the browser. Let's get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, browser settings, is it? extensions so you need the actual chrome extension that you want the files uh, you normally get like a manifest file or something like that um, and then you uh, tell the bot where that extension is so you can with lots of extensions or especially if you made the extension yourself then uh, you'll have the files uh, there that it's normally called a manifest i think or something like that a manifest well, oh, it's actually on here. Each path contains extension and folder with the yeah. So you need to direct the bot here uh, to where that man manifest is, uh, the JSON file, and then it's going to read it, and then it will have that on each browser instance that you run. I don't have time to actually do one with you, but I have. I'll make a point of doing it in the next video so that we'll actually go and get um, a rant, not a random. You can let me know which kind of extension you're trying to put on and we'll um, add one there. Okay, guys, I'm afraid that's going to have to be it for today. What's the time now? 8.15. I'm going to have to make like a tree and leave. Uh, yeah, Van, yeah. Uh, I know I haven't gone into much detail with that. It's under uh, browser. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's under browser and then browser settings. And right at the bottom, if you go to the question mark, here it's going to tell you more detail uh, to use extension must download it and uh, give the full path and it gives you an example um, it gives you an example there of how how to do it um, I will say this a bit like when you're using Node.js with uh, browser automation studio it uh, this is a framework it's not perfect and you might it might be a bit buggy okay some extensions work absolutely fine some don't and i'll be honest about that and uh like when you're using node.js sometimes it hangs up so just give it a go most are okay um to work with um yeah so that's how you use extensions i've got to go guys i'm really sorry but um in the next live feed i'll be answering more questions so if you've got any questions send them to me on Discord or email, and I'll make sure that they are included in the next live feed, which I think will be tomorrow evening.
All right, guys, thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate your questions. I love helping out. Um, if you're not already a member of the Discord channel, then get over there. Check out thebotempire.com as well. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm out of here. Peace.